Hey guys, how's it been going? This is Jacer. So in this video, let's take a look at Use. This is a new hook uh, coming in the next big version of React, probably 19. And uh, I think it's better for us to get familiar with it uh, just right before it is ready, right? And uh, yeah, let's begin. So as described on the homepage of React, Using is a, is a React hook that lets us reach the value of a resource like promise or context. The usage will be very simple, like this. Like, uh, this is a promise, so we use it. This is a context, we use it. And uh, the source code of this use um, uh, API is pretty simple as well. We can see that it merely dedicates to these uh, internal APIs based on the type of the argument. If it is uh, thenable, which is basically it's, it's a promise, then just use thenable. If it is context, we we'll use the read context. So the use standable is a bit interesting. So um, I think I've spent a quite a few series um, trying to understand how suspense works internally, right? Um, I think if you're not familiar with it, check my series React Internal Steep Dive. There are a few episodes about it. So so uh, what React does is quite interesting. It checks the state of the promise that if it is pending it will throw that promise and stop rendering further for the subtree and uh, and and once the thrown promise is caught a retry callbacks are attached to that uh, promise it means that when once the promise has the data coming in uh, the Re react will try to re-render everything and make it work for us and that's for the uh, suspending part. It, it stops going full, uh, downward, stop rendering the subtree, but above it goes up to the closest suspense boundary and uh, turn on the switch to show the fallback there. That's why we are able to see um, the uh, uh, the loading indicator as such. So that's how this use standable should work as well. And in fact, in the episode of how Lazy works internally in React, we've actually tried to create a module loader, which follows the same spirit. Uh, this is how we created our own version of Lazy. Um, so this load load function is the loader that returns a promise. We will initialize the load promise outside of this component. We'll return a new component because this Lazy component, right? So once this component is Render this load function will be called and it will kick off the loading of the promise, uh, which is this module loader. You see that it has internally the module promise area, it holds everything, holds the state of the promise. And uh, when this load is called, uh, if the module is already loaded, we just return it, like if it is a synchronous function. If it is aired, we just throw this error and the error boundary will catch this. If it is not initialized, we see you see that we attach the callbacks to set the data or set the error. And in the end, it is pending, right? So we throw this promise. It means that this lazy component will suspend. Uh, here's a demo. So here's an app, uh, which this is a lazy component. And this lazy is our version of lazy. It's not the uh, built-in version of lazy. Uh, and we render the lazy component by ticking this checkbox. Um, we are supposed to see the suspense for fallback here, because once the a promise is thrown here, React will go up to its parent and and recursively go go through all these ANSYS nodes to find the possible suspense boundary, which is here. So check it. Loading will be displayed, and two seconds later, uh, the contents of this component will be uh, will be displayed. So this is basically how suspense works well the thing is different from the use is that this module loader accepts the argument of loader which is the function that returns the promise when it's called we actually could tweak this function a little bit to make it uh, uh, available for a promise so you see this is a my use thenable uh, it accepts the thenable as an argument here we just use the global store status store uh, to 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 hold the stat, stat status and the data or error for it, so uh, the code here follows the same spirit. If it is pending, we just throw this enable. If it is fulfilled, then we return the value. If it's rejected, we return the error. Here we use the weak mac to to uh, 
prevent, uh, not prevent, to not block uh, the garbage collection for this uh, entrance. So here's a rewrite of the same demo in app here. Uh, basically, we render the same lazy component. The one thing is that uh, you see that this component venable uh, is the promise itself, right? It kicks off once this app just is no loaded, it's initialized. So it doesn't wait for the render of this component. So uh, when we click this, you can see that it's already there. Um, let's refresh a little bit. Okay. Refresh it, click it, loading. And two seconds later, the same component is rendered. So this is how it works. And the syntax itself is, looks very similar to Zen, uh, the use Zenable here, right? Um, yeah, you can, you can see that message, use message pr promise. Here we just uh, use the uh, my use Zenable. Uh, this is a promise. So basically the similar, but I, but I need to point it out here is that our implementation has the caveat, uh, has some issues. We'll dive into soon. And one thing we need to notice that this weak map, this global status is actually not that necessary. We only, only want to store some information on this Zenable. Then why don't we just use this Zenable, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's a, this is an improvement. Um, rather than using a global store, uh, we will update the status data or error directly on the Zenable. So next time we want to check uh, the data, we just to get the status directly from the uh, Zenable. Oh, sorry, I have I forgot to update this entry, but yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, now let's take a look at the internals of US Denable. Sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, so this is the US Denable. The first two global variables need some explanation here. So there are my there might be multiple US Denable uh, in one component, right? Uh, recall that for each component, there's actually a fiber node. Um, like map into it, and so that React can, can construct a, a fiber tree out of it. And to, in order to navigate through those multiple Zenables, uh, React internally puts them together into an array and use this global cursor uh, so that we can extract uh, the uh, Zenable that was processed uh, or used uh, previously. By previously here, I mean the uh, I mean the uh, st uh, strict mode uh, because this whole process is actually to prevent one bad practice. Um, uh, we'll come back to it later. Um, the one big chunk of code here needs some explanation too. Uh, that's something I mentioned that we cannot implement by ourselves. Um, so if we look, look if we look at our code here, um, when we meet the denable status pending case, so. Uh, we need to suspend, we just throw, right? It means that the code after the use Zenable uh, is not going to be run. Uh, suppose there are multiple hooks, like there's a use state after the use Zenable, then the use state hook um, is not going to be called. That results in an issue is that um, uh, we know that maybe uh, if you not know, please take a look at a po my post about it. So use state internally use uh, two uh, subversions of this uh, hook like one is mount state the other one is up state depending on whether it's the initial mount or it's just the update so it's not the initial mount but um but once we suspend uh, and we come back to rent the the re-render later once the promise is fulfilled at that time rack defaults will use the update one but here is a problem the use state hook was not initialized before in the initial mount, but it's not directly go to the update state, uh, go, going to the updating phase, then yeah, it's like an issue occurs, right? So it means that once a use in the suspends, like throws and promise, all the hooks after it inside this fiber should be, uh, should be called in the mount as initial mount in the next recurring phase, like once uh, React is ready to re-render it again. That's the purpose here. So here's uh, some if conditions, and once it matches, uh, it will actually force the dispatcher to mount, meaning the hooks will be used uh, the mount version. There's a detailed issue reported there. If you're interested, take a look. So for the, uh, I'll just explain for the conditions here a little bit. So you can see that, um, 
and the issue only happens on the initial render. If this update, it means that all the hooks are properly initialized and into a linked is and hooked to the fiber node, right? Um, so there's no problem at all because function calls are identpotent. Uh, there's no problem with just re-render it. But the, this issue happens just for the initial mount. So here's a check. If this currently the fiber being constructed doesn't have alternate, alternate it means that it is initial mount. And also, um, we are going to check that is use there are nothing, no, uh, uh, like uh, no hooks called after this use denable. It mean the uh, it means that we are safe to turn the dispatcher to mount after this use denable, right? So you will check that if there there is a working progress hook. By working progress hook. It means that there is no hooks called before use enable. Well, this is a bit tricky. If you look at the uh, blog post about use state or my blog post of use fit, you know that. So the working progress hook, meaning the current hook that is being run inside of this component. If this no, it means that either this uh, use enable is bef at the beginning of all the hooks, or there are no hooks at all. So. If there's no hooks called before this unable, it will check if there is are no hooks at all, meaning the memo state is null. Memo state actually is, uh, holds all the hooks, state hook, effect hooks, stuff like that. And if it is not null, it means that uh, the work in progress hook, if it is not null, it means there is a hook called between use enable. But if this next is null, it means that this hook, even if it is called before the enable, that is the end of the hook list. It's a bit, bit, it's a bit, bit um, uh, mind twisting. So let's take a look at the, uh, think about it this way. We want to turn on the dispatch to, uh, uh, to mount once we are sure that use the enable is the end of the hooks caught last time. Am I right? Yeah. If there's a hook called after this use denable, then meaning the use denable uh, was not was not throwing last in in the last render, right? So that that means we should not turn data on to mount. So in order to make sure that use denable is was the last hook called in the last render, um, we need to check there's no traces of other hooks being called which we can get from the memo state and the work in progress hook. So yeah, that's it. That's a bit tw twisty. And please take a look at looking at, look at the conditions here and read my post for, to understand it better. Anyway, that's something we cannot implement. Now, now let's pick at, go back to the, uh, uh, the global cursor here. As I mentioned, all the used denables are put into the array and the, this cursor will be used to navigate through the denables. And actually this global uh, cursor and this uh, denable state, the array for each fiber is resetted, is reset in this finished rendering hooks just right after the rendering of each fiber. So it means that it means that each time this user denable is called for each fiber, these are all reset. Now, if we go to the uh, track used denable, which is the core logic for this used denable here, we will see that the previous is the track denable state, uh, tracked denables accessed by this index. It will always be undefined. This is partially true. It, it should be true most of the time, except one case, that is the uh, double rendering under a strict mode it will not be undefined. So this list of the denables created by this uh, create an enable state, we can see that the list is purely for the strict mode. And the purpose of it is to throw this uh, uh, warning. A component was suspended by an uncached promise. By cache, it means that the the, uh, the promise was is not uh, initialized during the render, but externalized out of the uh, component. So here's the thing. This something, 
uh, load something and return the promise and put it inside the component. This is not good. If we externalize the loading, then it's fine because this promise is out of the rendering cycles and it's cache. This is the meaning of cache. So all this array, this hassle was to uh, uh, like uh, trigger this warning. Yeah, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. We can see that um, here, if it is fulfilled, then we return the fulfilled value is rejected. Just throw this rejected error for the error boundary to catch. And then they also attach the then callbacks to the thenables and update the status uh, at the right timing, just as we what we did, right? And here's the interesting one. It says, check one more time in case the thenable resolved synchronously. But it's, yeah, it's interesting. I'll explain it soon. Uh, yeah, I explain it here. But remember, once the callbacks are set in this uh, use thenable, it checks the status right away. At the first kind of glance of this code, it is almost impossible, right? Because promise um, by by its nature, it's async. There is no there's no chance that these uh, callbacks will be executed right away, except that this then was something somehow hacked. We'll explain it soon. Great. Uh, so here's a question: Are we going to see the warning if you use this use conditionally? Hmm, you might think that there is some matching. And uh, wouldn't that cause some mismatch if we use this thenable uh, in a different uh, conditionally? Thus, this previous will be something different, and this mismatch will go will, will go to this branch. Well, the answer is no. The reason is, as we said, after each rendering of this component, this index and this state will be reset. So, uh, even if we use these. Uh, you use thenable conditionally, there won't be mismatched because they will always be recreated. So this check, again, it's only for uh, double rendering under uh, strict mode. Cool. So this is the caveat I want to mention is the promise, once we create it, we're unable to unwrap the promise immediately, even if it is fulfilled. Here's a demo to show that. So in this app, we're going to use the uh, built-in use from Rack, and you see that this promise, it resolves to jser.dev uh, immediately. But from the nature of promise, this will be async. So we will use this promise and get the string, and let's turn it on. Yeah, you can see that even though the JSR dev, we already know the value, but React doesn't know the value. So it shows still shows the loading indicator. This is not something not cool, or maybe, yeah, by its nature, it's cool, but um, since we've already seen the, the how uh, usable works internally, again, there's one more time uh, of checking the thenable state right after the callback are, callbacks are set. Uh, we can actually hack into the then uh, here. We can hack it. So the promise then, uh, we will set up the callbacks as always, but we will update the status and the value to the promise right away so that uh, the React knows the um, data um, well, just without waiting for the promise. So we'll, he, uh, React will able, be able to know the data instant, instantly. So let's try the code again. Here we hacked the then of this uh, promise and then we turn it on. Yeah, voila, we see the uh, content right away without the loading indicator. But this is only for de demo purpose. This is pretty hacky. Uh, I don't suggest you use it or you'll get fired um, by React, though we're not in React team. Okay, uh, that's all for the use promise. Now let's take a look at the use against context. Um, as explained, the use hook internally use this you read context for context values and actually use context. The hook is the alias for read context. This means that use hook against context is totally equivalent to use context. Yeah. And uh, we'll stop here. If you are interested in learning more about context, please refer to my post about how context works internally. It's pretty interesting. Um, it's slightly 
more about algorithm stuff. Great. Uh, the last piece of this use hook is that actually it could be called conditionally. Um, uh, we already briefly touched it in this quiz. Uh, yeah. So are we going to use this warning if you use conditionally? No, we're not. Okay. Um, the reason for why this hook could be called conditionally is due to the nature of how it retrieves and stores data. Unlike the other hooks, like use state hook or effect hook, uh, passive effect hook or layout effect hooks, anything like, anything like that, they are all storing data um, or configuration into a data point. Um, and those data points form a linked list and that linked list is hooked to the fiber. And that's why the order or the call order of each use hook uh, matters. Otherwise, they will just mismatch, right? But use, this use hook is, after we are diving into its internals, uh, it's totally different from other hooks. For promise, it gets the data and stores the data directly from, uh, from and to the prom itself. It doesn't read some um, data structure from the fiber, right? And also the use context is the same. Uh, it doesn't read any data from uh, the data points related to a fiber. Rather, it gets the data from its closest um, suspense boundary, which means, oh, not suspense, the count context provider. It will go up to its ancestors one by one and uh, find the first ancestor node that is the context, that provides this context value. So it doesn't mean doesn't matter we, where uh, use context is called inside of the, the function component. Um, so that means the use context itself actually could be called conditionally, though the linter rule actually warns about it. I think that's due to the fact that the React team doesn't want everybody or most of the developer, developers to worry about the internal stuff. It's because it's quite complex and uh, that might add up to more confusion. Um, so that just, uh, okay, I just don't use it conditionally until we, we are confident that um, it won't cause any confusion. That's they, that's this use hook is, uh, I think it's when they feel it will not cause any troubles. So yeah, it's free to use this use hook. Actually, yeah, again, you can use these use, use context hook as well. Great, uh, summary, uh, that's all for the use hook. It's quite simple comparing to other hooks, I would say. But personally, I'm not sure wh whether it's a good idea to put these two different type of data sources um, into one use hook. I personally like the use context hook together with a use promise. Um, I don't think they work the same. Uh, they only behave a little behave a little similar is that they are a bit different from other use hooks. Other than that, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe the React team is trying to add more data types uh, to into this uh, unified hook form, uh, but that's not something I can control, uh, just to share my opinion on, on this. So yeah, that's all for this episode. Um, I hope you, you like it. Um, yeah. Hope it helps. See you next time. Bye.